Welcome to the Non-Essential Podcast. I'm Steve Gibson. And I'm Benny Benny Boo. Hoobadoo. Benny Benny Boo. Hoobadoo. Scooby Benny Boo. Sup? I forgot. I was going to introduce myself as Steve. 55 Burgers, 55 Fries, Gibson. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... Again, callback to a very successful show, which we are not. <laughs> <laughs> I just like that as a, like a, I want that to be my actual nickname. Steve I, 55 Burgers, what 55. I, I don't, because if, like, the fast food joint recognizes me as the 55 Burgers guy, things have gone, I've torpedoed a lot harder See, than See, that's why to. we've got a... We've got like a deal over here in this house where I do basically all the cooking and like clean the dishes and stuff and it sucks ass. But if we go out to eat and get like drive through or carry out or something, yeah. it's Tara's job to pick it up. So all these people like just see Tara all the time and they know her. I'm like, good, that can be embarrassing for you. Yeah. I'm the anonymous fat ass at home. <laughs> yeah. I mean, or in the passenger seat, I guess. But uh, yeah, you kind of like at fast food, you kind of have to, it's easier if you order like delivery or something. Because you can be like, hey, pizza's here, and just pretend there's a, like a lot of people waiting <laughs> Other for people. pizza. Uh, <laughs> like, you kind of, like, you need to buy a van, I think, for, like, fast food drive through to work, where you're like, shut the fuck up, I'm getting your food. Uh, you're just yelling into an empty back, but they don't know that. You could, they could, like, have some cages back there, like, hit the cages with a stick, and be like, shut up, I'm getting it. <laughs> Yeah, but see, a guy that looks like me with like a windowless van just shouting in the back as if there's a bunch of people back there. Yeah. I think I'd just get the cops called on me. Be like, yeah, this guy's definitely. No, no, I was people. just really embarrassed to order 55 Happy Meals. Uh, I don't know. There's, this was all a big misunderstanding, officer. <laughs> it's like, why do you have exactly child shaped cages? <laughs> <laughs> That's the, I don't know if you ever watched that uh, sequel to Borat, which I think was just Borat 2. Um, it's it's exactly what you would expect it to be. There's a lot of it that's not great, and then there's the parts of it that are so fucking funny that, like, yeah, you're dying. you can't believe it's all the same movie. But one part was, like, that he went to, like, one of these, like, farm supply type of stores and said he was looking for cages for his... Um, I don't think remember if he outright said for his daughter, who was the character that was with him, but he was like, "Do you have any cages that would, you know, fit people in them or a person in them or something like kennels?" I think he was saying, and it was just it, it was pretty fucking funny. Like, yeah, uh, well, until it happens to you, Steve, it's oh, funny. It's, it, I live in Ohio. It happens to you about once a week here. Oh, like, Ohio get, is like the Simpsons movie where they put a big dome around it. That's mm -hmm. that's that is, that's Ohio. So, uh, welcome to the podcast, the non-essential one, to be exact. On this show, we tell each other stories. I have I have not broke the streak yet. I I almost did, but I did get a real topic this week. Um, it's not very long, so we'll be here about two hours. <laughs> oh. That leaves me time to like pick on you for the, uh, I'm not really pick on you, but, uh, gloat about the athletics, uh, Cleveland series that just wrapped up this afternoon. Look, if that's a point of pride for you, Godspeed. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> well, about all we let, can get. you let Tony I, Kemp hit a home run off you, so get fucked. Well, I was going to say that it's, it's funny. It's hard to gloat because out of the three games, two of them, Cleveland won by a run, one of them in extra innings. So it's not like, <laughs> yeah. they, but it was just funny how, cause on the radio that I don't know how much you've been following the Reds are on this incredible like i think they've got 11 wins in a row and they said for them it's the first time they've had 11 wins in a row since like 1942 yeah or something like that and so that's the big story because nobody expected the res to be anything and they're technically in first place in their division right now um so they were talking about that on the radio and then they said well, you know hold on they said the guardians they've they've got four in a row yeah. and then the other guy said well they got one, and then they played the A's. Yeah, they played an exhibition <laughs> with a glorified minor league team. Right. But, yeah. But that's a joke, because Cleveland, that's it's it's the first time they've strung together more than two wins in a row for, like, hey. a month and a half. Hey, so. they're t the A's actually won a couple series before that, so. 
So uh, we ended the streak. No, uh, the Rays ended no. it, but All right. yeah. they split. But they split a series with the Rays, which is also funny. The Rays should be better. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I don't want to. Not I, a baseball podcast. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to edit ten minutes of baseball, but I could. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just had to bring up that line there because I thought it was funny too. Because it's yeah. equally like disparaging to Cleveland and to Oakland, where they're like, "Well, they won one game and then played the A's." Yeah. It's like making fun of Charlie Brown for missing the football when you have a broken leg. It's, like, uh, it's all right, anyway. Uh, today we're going to talk about William Fly, who is... Is he pretty fly for a white guy? D- d- no. No. <laughs> He's probably not the most remarkable person to talk about, um, and he doesn't have that much of a backstory, well, then I'm glad you so, picked him. So, yeah, so, so why did I choose to talk about him? Because I'm really bad at this still. <laughs> <laughs> huh. William Fly was an accountant. He had two kids and then he died of a heart attack nah, at 53. He was, a, he was a pirate. And, a pirate, okay. And well. we've talked about it before. Like I, I think I did a pirate episode really early on when we started this show. And I really genuinely thought like... Pirates would be a common well I dipped into to do this show because you and me mm-hmm. are totally into them. They're a really interesting part of history. But it turns out like pirate stories are there's either not a lot of meat on them or there's too much. You know, where it's yeah. like, it's like I can't. And there's like the handful of like the black beards and, and that stuff that it's like. Yeah you've heard about and so it gives you the impression that it, they were all like that and then it, like you said most of them are like oh they stole a ship and yeah. sank two more ships and then got hung and it's yeah. like okay <laughs> like yeah and uh this story you basically summed up this story <laughs> um but there's it, there's a reason i picked him uh so let's get into it so william fly's story we don't even know when he was born uh, but we know his piracy career technically began, as, as far as we can know, began in 1726. Uh, he joined the crew of a ship named the Elizabeth Snow, which was captained by one John Green. Well, then I'm going to choose to believe he was born in 1720. He was six years old when he took up. <laughs> uh, yeah, his... It could be just a little fucking. I'm toddler. finally potty trained. Can yeah. I join you, crew? Yeah, and John's like, "Fuck it, I don't care." Yeah. Supposedly, he claimed to the rest of the crew that he had been on a pirate crew before this, but whether that's true or he was just talking himself up, you know, you can kind of take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, I'm already picturing him as like the guy on the pirate crew that nobody likes. <laughs> like... You would be wrong. Oh. Uh for now. The Elizabeth Snow's voyage uh, was set to be from Rhode Island to West Africa. During the voyage, Fly and Captain Green argued relentlessly, and Fly ultimately conspired with the other crew members to remove him from command and be named captain himself. So Fly is that remarkable sort of dude who can be doing something for like a month and somehow convince everybody he should be in charge of the whole fucking thing. Um, yeah why not yeah uh and everybody's like yeah he seems cool his name is william fly dude the mutineers yanked captain green from his cabin at one o'clock in the morning shouting upon deck you dog for we shall lose no more time about you oh them some man that's a sick burn back in 1726 you call uh, you call me a dog now i start swinging (laughs) Fly was wielding a cutlass and told Green he had been named captain and ordered him not to resist, which is funny when a situation where you literally can't resist. Green was hauled to the deck and asked if he wanted to leap overboard on his own or if he wanted to be tossed. Green begged for his life for an hour uh, before the crew grew tired of him and threw him off the ship, which you let him go on for an hour. Um, yeah i mean (laughs) it's like i want to know who the dude who was like that patient that exact amount of patience (laughs) 
<laughs> I'll give you it's one like hour to convince me. This is 12 Angry Men except the Pirate Edition, where there's just one guy like, hold on now, hold on now, let's hear him out. Yeah. No, no, he might have a point. Which is a dangerous person to be on the pirate ship, because there's a good chance they also throw you overboard with yeah. them. Like, just get rid of them both. So they throw him off. Green grabbed hold of the main sheet, which uh, in old ship terms is basically just what they called the main rope for a sail. Um... But one of the mutineers lopped his hand off with an axe, and Green plummeted into the water. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Which, uh, that's got to be a terrifying moment when, like, your your only hope is your hand, and somebody's coming up to it with a big axe. Yeah. I think I'd let go, because I, I want my hand. If I'm going to have to try to, like, stay afloat in the ocean, you know you're fucked anyway, but... Yeah. Like, I'd rather... I don't know. I just... All of this shit, I, like, I would have killed William Fly after the first argument. By, yeah, well, by old pirate rules, like, you got it. It's like prison. Like, you can't let somebody punk you, you know? <laughs> like, you're the captain. You got to fuck him up and be like, anybody else got anything to say? And if more than two people say yes, in the middle of the night, you take the little boat and you, like, well, row away. What kind of what kind of captain is sleeping in his his cabin at one in the morning with the door like unlocked or whatever because well and I, well i mean you know you gotta you gotta have a pistol loaded too that's what i mean like can't trust if you anyone. just had the door the door barred you sure they could kick it down but by then you should have your pistols yeah and you just blast whoever comes through first yeah um green's first mate thomas jenkins was also brought to the deck and given the choice to jump or be thrown himself Again, Jenkins pled, pled for his life. A crew member hit him with an axe, this time in his shoulder. Um, and the last they saw of Thomas Jenkins, he was swimming and crying for help. The, the, after this, William Fly got to work setting up his operation. The Elizabeth Snow was officially given a Jolly Roger flag and renamed the Fame's Revenge. <laughs> which i actually See, the think, problem was, i think elizabeth snow is a pretty good pirate ship name oh it's a very good pirate ship name and that but the problem was it wasn't a pirate ship he thought he was becoming a pirate but he just had joined yeah. a regular ship and then it was like man captain green you're an awful pirate it's like when no, we shit, still not... shit it's like we move sugar <laughs> right <laughs> uh its path of operations would just be all along the eastern coast of america they would get uh, some much needed experience in piracy uh, because it's not like William Fly was fucking Blackbeard. Um, I'm re I'm still really not sure after reading the story what he sold the crew on besides like you, anybody can do it. Yeah. Any of this green guy, a dick. Yeah. Kind of nice though, right? Like, and the, and the way that that was worded before you said it, it's like they killed these two people and then he studied up on being a pirate. It's like, so he didn't even bother learning. To, like, study up on the ship until after he, he had yeah. assumed control. Like, well, I think he knew what he wanted to do. It was just kind of, you know. He's like, where's this? Uh, how, did, like, did you actually know how to do this or did you just, like, read about it? But as we've learned from years of doing this show, just winging it, as long as you act like you know what you're doing, that's nine times out of ten good enough. Totally, yeah. Uh, it wasn't for fly. If we're being honest, <laughs> uh, but he definitely tried. Uh, the first ship they took was named the John Hanna. Uh, they captured her crew and also sank the ship because they've never done this ship before. And, yeah, I thought that was like the whole point yeah. of capturing the ship. They also went after a ship named the John and Betty, but it was initially outsailed by it for some time. A determined Captain Fly pursued it. Probably longer than any self-respecting pirate would have. Uh, but eventually he got in range. They hoisted their Jolly Roger, fired the guns, and boarded the ship once it surrendered. I love that they waited. They followed it for what, in my mind, I'm picturing like months just zigzagging. Yeah. And, and they wait till they're within range to hoist a Jolly Roger. Like, haha, now you know we're pirates. It's like, we, actually, we figured that, that out. Actually, yeah, I mean, it was probably obvious. But you probably don't want to be in a prolonged race against a boat in case the, like the fucking yeah. navy shows up and sees like you're, you're holding <laughs> a pirate yeah 
<laughs> and you and uh, for their trouble, they got sail cloth and muskets. So not a huge haul. So if the Navy did show up, it's like, okay, well, you blew your load for a couple <laughs> rifles, and now you're fucked. But, but these are the best <laughs> dress yeah. pirates we've come across. Yeah. They also, uh, from this haul, picked up an experienced sailor named William Atkinson. Who knew the East Coast uh, better than probably any of the crew? William Fly decided to detain Atkinson and use him as the ship's pilot. Atkinson didn't want to do this, but like a lot of pirate crews uh, or members of a pirate crew, he didn't have a lot of choice on the matter. That is something yeah. that's not really touched on a lot in like pirate fiction and shit is a lot of those guys are like, they got captured and it's like you join or you die. Yeah. Which is a bitch because then if you get captured by the Navy, it's like, we're hanging you as a pirate. It's like, well, yeah. yeah. Uh, which is an interesting point, which we will touch on later. <laughs> uh, fly told Atkinson, your palavering won't save your bacon. Go, you shan't. Discharge your Damn. duty like an honest man, or I'll send you to the devil with my compliments. Now we know why they picked him yeah. as the captain. Is he? Yeah, say what you will. Fly had the fucking lingo down. Yeah, he's he's the Her- Herman Melville of pirates. Yeah, and he used the word palavering. Yeah, I don't know what that means. And, yeah. I'm and we do it every smart. day. <laughs> uh, we do it once a week on this show. Uh, palavering right now as a matter of fact you might be you might suffer from palavering and not even know it (laughs) now that sounds more like the drug that solves something be like ask Uh, your doctor about palavering i got palaveroids so my doctor (laughs) gave me some palavering cream uh so the crew continued to pirate the coast they would take a sloop off the coast of delaware but didn't find anything useful uh, it was then that William Fly ordered Atkinson to take the ship to Martha's Vi- Martha's Vineyard, but Atkinson intentionally steered them off course. Fly and his crew were now in Nantucket, and the captain had a gun aimed at Atkinson. You are an obstinate villain, he said, and you mean to hang us, but blood and wounds, you dog, you shan't live to see it. However... Another pirate jumped in and talked Fly out of killing Atkinson, believing it was an honest mistake. Or people just liked Atkinson and were starting to see Fly as a bit of a dick. Yeah, when you've taken three or four ships now and you've got, like, a pair of new shoes to show for it. Yeah, which you get to wear. probably like, oh, fuck. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, The more Atkinson talked to the crew, the more they became convinced he might permanently become one of them. Uh, and they liked the sound of an able seaman potentially even dis- deposing the captain. We're all tourists that just wandered onto this boat right before it took off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Atkinson was clear that to this crew that he wouldn't accept command of the ship, uh, but he didn't talk them out of a mutiny against Fly by any stretch. They would capture another schooner in June. Uh, it's important to remember this is all still happening in 1726. Uh, so this is just so a, they're busy. Uh, this is just a couple they're, of months. They're busy boys. Yeah. Uh, and received a tip about a better ship nearby that would be worth the crew's actual efforts. Fly sent six of his men on a schooner to go capture the ship. <laughs> With Fly's more trusted men gone, Atkinson saw more fishing vessels start to come into sight and asked the captain to come take a look through his glass. For some reason, Fly put all of his weapons down to do this. And Atkinson... It was a huge glass. Yeah, like just... Yeah, had to hold it with two hands. Like, hey, you want to look through my telescope? And then just imagine a guy just, like, undressing. (laughs) <laughs> it's like, well, what are you doing? You just look through the fucking lens. Uh, for some reason, Fly did that, and Atkinson and three of the crew immediately grabbed the weapons and captured Fly with pretty little trouble. Fly was pissed and was cursing the crew for all the devils of hell to come and fly away with the ship, and that totally happened. The end. <laughs> 
Actually, <laughs> actually, Atkinson sailed the ship to Boston Harbor on June 28th. Uh, Fly's ca- pirate captain career was a total of just over two months. Him and his associates, one Samuel Cole, oh. George Condick, and Henry Greenville were brought to the Court of Admiralty. Condick got off, but the rest were found guilty of piracy and murder and condemned to death. How'd the other guy get off? It's like, yeah, I don't really know these guys. They're not clear. So it's probably, uh, this just shows how much I half ass my sources. But one of the sources for this is told from the perspective of like a minister who kind of interviewed all these guys. And so I don't know if like all these guys were part of his crew or they were just all pirates lumped together and they called them yeah. associates. Oh, that's true. Cause they did that a lot. Cause they, yeah, that was that thing like, Oh, well you're all pirates. So you're all just, you must all be buddies. Yeah. You're like, all no, one we... big gang. It's like, it's not yeah. an army motherfucker. Uh, on the day of his execution, July 12th, the 20, and shit worked fast there. Here's like you're on, they speed run you to the news. Um, the 27 year old fly supposedly could still see a ship in the Harbor from the gallows, which is a sad, but kind of poetic image. Cotton Mather, uh, the minister who interviewed these guys said that fly showed no guilt, shame, or contrition, and that he looked unconcerned overall. Until he reached the gallows, and then his demeanor quickened, and he began inspecting everything. He was like, wait, that's what a gallows is? Fuck. Yeah. No, nah, it, was, it was more like he was testing the noose, and that, like he even told the hangman that he didn't understand his trade. And like, <laughs> so Fly showed the hangman how to tie a proper noose, and then he tied his own fucking noose himself for everyone to see. Uh Fly explained to the crowd that he was not afraid to die and that he had wronged no man except, you know, well, green women. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. And the uh, first mate, whatever. And, his... You know, everyone he killed on those boats. Uh, Cotton Mather explained that Fly was determined to die what he called, quote, a brave fellow. It was expected for these pirates in their final words to be kind of penitent and serve as an example of the tragic fate of choosing a life of piracy and they all did likely in hopes of trying to get like a last minute pardon but fly did not ask for forgiveness or praise the authorities or affirm the values of christianity like you were kind of expected to do instead he took the opportunity to trash the dead captain green again uh <laughs> voicing his final wish that all masters of vessels might take warning by the fate of Captain Green that had been murdered and to pay sailors their wages when due and treat them better. <laughs> That's what this all came down to. Green was like three hours late giving him his paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, that was his rant. He was like, he said that uh, the captain's barbarity is what turned men into a life of piracy. He basically turned all his entire last words into a class warfare argument, uh, protesting the conditions of workers at sea and talking about what he called bad usage of the crew. He was then hanged, and to the short-lived captain's credit, he embraced the proud pirate mentality right up until the end. Because he said, "R" as it. Yeah, that's all it takes. If you say "R," you're a pirate. During Mather's attempts to bring Fly to salvation before his execution, he described that Fly was typically in a rage and would alternate between cursing the heavens themselves and complaining about the conditions he ranted about during his execution. Mather described Fly as a most uncommon and amazing instance of impenitency and stupidity. But there was something to Fly's message— while pirates were terrifying and awful bastards, they were in some ways the natural counter to the wealthy and powerful, who were not above their own terror. Le- you know, quote, legit captains back then often used lashing and torture and killing among their own crew. 
And any history book or modern news story can show you what the wealthy and powerful get up to on land. <laughs> right. And if Fly would not send that the message that the powers that be wanted with his final words, the powers that be made sure to send it with his body. After they were hanged, the pirates' bodies were placed in uh, gibbet cages and hung on the island uh, named Nix's Mate and as a warning of the fate all pirates court when choosing that life. <laughs> and for the residents of Nixon's Mate, it's like, great, and now our whole village smells like corpse again. <laughs> well, Nix's Mate is not that big of an island, actually. And the story's over, but an interesting thing about Nix's Island, like it's a, it's big enough to like, it was like big enough to have a lighthouse on maybe. Um, but it's said that a man was hanged for killing his captain once and he warned before his death uh, that Nix's Island itself will disappear as proof of his innocence. The island has eroded a lot over the centuries and most of the vegetation is underwater now, but it's not gone. So I guess the dude so was he guilty. Wasn't innocent. Yeah. yeah. He was guilty as yeah. shit. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Fuck. I, I, I expected global warming to be quicker. Damn yeah. it. Um, it's, it's interesting though. Cause you, you kind of ended like the whole ending and the point of it was, I, what I was thinking, uh, when you said that he, his last words were more in a rage against his former captain. Um, I had read a book at some point, and I forget exactly which ship it was about, whatever, but it talked a lot about that. Like, <laughs> a lot of the captains um, at the time of quote unquote legitimate, you know, sh sailing ships did some really, really shitty things. Um, totally. And that's what, the, whatever the book I read, it was, it was talking about a mutiny that had occurred. Uh, but how it's like at the end of the day, I think they kind of found the mutineers um, innocent. Like it was talking about it had led to a bunch of new rules for like what captains were supposed to do as far as treating their crew because they were they would promise wages, but then not pay them. Yeah. Um, like you said, they lash them. They would outright kill. Uh, and that's what I think Spurn uh, like I said. So it's pretty fuzzy because it's been a long time and I, and I don't even remember exactly what book it was. But uh this particular captain, captain, there was just one guy in this crew that he just fucking didn't like, took an exception to. And and it could have been a, something as little as the, a lot of these captains had the mentality of, I've got to pick somebody and show just to establish my my dominance. Mm -hmm. And that works to an extent. He flogged this like relatively young, I think it was the cook, and then it was somebody that most of the crew liked ended up flogging him to death and beating him over stupid stuff. And the crew was like, well, fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, murdered yeah. the shit out of the captain. Like, uh, so like mutinies always are depicted as like, we didn't get enough treasure. And like, yeah, that's part of it. But sometimes like the captains are just dicks. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of time we're incompetent. And then it's not just like, Oh, our captain's stupid. We don't like it. But, you're you're in a very dangerous profession when you're out at sea in a fucking wood boat with sails like yeah um your crew tends to not appreciate it when you continually put them in mortal danger because of your incompetence yeah. there were a lot of things that you know you could do as a captain that they wouldn't uh, appreciate um and then of course turning to piracy is it, it, it's just one of those things, like, what are your options at that point once you've killed your, <laughs> your, yeah. your captain? Like, we'll just return home and explain the I'll situation. put on a fake mustache. No, I am Captain, captain Green. Right. Um, although I imagine at the time they didn't have, like, the internet and, like, TV to some picture. You probably could just show up at a port on... Yeah. anywhere else in the world and say you're captain green <laughs> no, <it doesn't, laughs> and, and i mean i got flesh-eating scurvy um, mm. so yeah that's... But, but yeah it's <laughs> he sounded like but it's it's interesting because it sounds like it, at the end when they're describing it's just the constant rage and whatever like it really sounded like he had just some either just like anger problems or just some kind of mental condition there. 
but it started to make me question even more. It's like, how bad was Captain Green that this quickly yeah. fly could get the crew to be like, yeah, this guy's better. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, like I reading that story, he just comes across as like, like, you know, he made a compelling argument, but like, I think this dude just really wanted to be a pirate. Oh, certainly. Like, because you could, like I said, you can complain about, the treatment of sailors and the captain particular that doesn't excuse away but, like the but, five boats that you yeah <laughs> like the robbed. Thing, like being like i wrong no one it's like you literally turn to a life of wronging people <laughs> right well and even if you like if it was a robin hood thing it's like i just stole stuff from people i didn't deserve it's like yeah but you were killing people too yeah like, <laughs> that's that's a harder one to I don't know, but it's it, it does make me happy to hear about a pirate that never stole anything meaningful too. Yeah, it's like we... <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, I don't know. He uh, he was one of the worst pirates I've read about, but he <laughs> he played the part. But it's a good counter counterbalance. I, I I don't remember the guy's name, but you did do you did a couple pirates. I remember, um, and then I can't remember if it was you. I think it was you that did like the Chinese pirate. Um, yeah. But my favorite was the pirate that his like calling card was that he would steal the hats. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. people. Yeah, he and, was great. Uh, that was the Arthur Morgan of piracy. Like, yeah, so, uh, yeah. So you know, they're uh, they're not written off by any means as a topic of interest. They're just kind of hard to come by. It is, yeah. It, and the as soon as that, you started talking about that, I, I was kind of laughing internally because I've looked into it before too, and so many of them. And they'll even start out great. They'll be like, "Oh, you know, this happened," and then there was this fierce battle, and they managed to survive and scrap together the boat. And then three weeks later, they were captured and hung. Here I go. Yeah, yeah. I what drew me to this one was just the timeline of like, yeah. Becoming your own captain of your own ship and then being hanged like fucking two months later. Well, and in fairness, they probably would have just jailed him. But the the what made it a hanging offense is changing the name of the ship to something worse. Yeah. For... But just like we were, th we were talking before, like I, I started a new job recently. Like my training period is technically like six months. And it's like you don't you don't even get a fraction of that at sea is like. You better be good at this piracy shit right out the gate. Well, and in fairness, the only thing that did him in was this guy that was like, fuck you. Like, I don't want to be on your crew. So they kept taking both successfully. But it did sound like, too, part of the reason they probably weren't getting good scores is it sounds like he was picking, like, the smallest, easiest boats to take. <laughs> like, yeah. Which is smart. That's how I play, like, well, that's how I play video games. It's like never put yourself into a big fight that you might lose no. level uh, up yeah that's what he was doing yeah he's, uh, he I'm, was a, grinding. I'm just gonna gr i gotta grind 50 more schooners look we steal enough more bolts of silk from these other ships and we'll have the best looking sails on the <laughs> no we have a fetch quest <laughs> did anybody see a crate full of spider legs yeah or cobalt hats i don't know all right uh yeah so that's it that's all i got i don't know, I, I could have had more but i didn't so was captain fly related to captain bly like is that, how I, could that I could look i could look it up but then i would have to captain try <laughs> touche or not touche but just whatever <laughs> just go away touche is like <laughs> you got me yeah that's it that's the show. Yeah. See you guys. Yeah. We'll we'll try again. <laughs> we'll try is a strong just, word. Just, 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 <laughs> nah, we'll be we'll, here again. Nah, we'll physically next, show next up. week we'll run it back. Same topic. I'll do it better, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an interesting <laughs> experiment. Oh, that would suck. No. There's all, like only it. thing it's... worse is like doing the reading the same thing twice to someone. Yeah, well Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's pirates. Like I say, even a bad pirate story is usually still pretty good. Yeah. I... All right. Uh, yeah. Until next time. Ta-ta. Avast. Wait, no, that's. <laughs>